Hello and welcome to this edition of Back in History. In this edition, we bring to you the story of how Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan was unable to function as acting president of Nigeria in the absence of his principal for months and how he was eventually authorized by the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in conjunction with the House of Representatives to act in the absence of the president pending the return of the president from Saudi Arabia where he went for treatment. Goodluck Abele Jonathan was elected as vice president of Nigeria in 2007 on a joint ticket with President Omaru Musa Yeradua. Their tenure was to last for four years in the first instance and by the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, they were entitled to serve for another four years in the event of a re-election. They carried on with their tenure smoothly for about three years, though there were fears in some quarters about the health status of the president, President Omaru Musa Yeradua. The president had a few occasions to travel abroad for treatment, but would always return after some days to continue in office. But sometime in November 2009, President Yaradwa had cause to travel to Saudi Arabia three times for treatment. The president's health at this time had become a cause of concern to many citizens of the country. On Monday 23rd November 2009, the Chief Press Secretary to President Yaradwa, Kolusha Gunadeniyi, made a press release which read thus, quote, President Omar Musa Yaradwa left Abuja today for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. While there, the President will call on his personal physicians in Jeddah for follow-up medical checks. The President forwarded copies of the 2010 National Appropriation Bill to the Senate President and the Speaker of the House of Representatives before leaving the country. He wishes the Muslim Umar and all Nigerians happy Idel Kabil celebration. End of quote. Four days after the president's departure from Nigeria to Saudi Arabia, a media briefing was held in Abuja and at the briefing, a message from the president's personal physician, Dr. Salih Subanye, was read out to the media. The message was dated November 2000 and nine, and it read as follows, quote, At about 3 p.m. on Friday, November 20th, 2009, after he returned from the Abuja Central Mosque where he performed the Jumat prayer, President Umaru Musa Yiradua complained of left-sided severe chest pain. Preliminary medical examination suggested acute pericarditis, an inflammatory condition of the covering of the heart. It was then decided that he should undertake confirmatory checks at the King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, where he had his last medical checkup. The medical review and test undertaken at the hospital have confirmed the initial diagnosis that the president is indeed suffering from acute pericarditis. He is now receiving treatment for the ailment and is responding remarkably well. End of quotes. Our Google checks reveal that acute pericarditis means a painful inflammation of the pericardium, the fluid filled pouch surrounding the heart. The pain usually becomes severe when the person affected lies down and when he breathes in. Unfortunately, this particular journey to Saudi Arabia turned out to be a long journey which lasted for months. The president's health did not improve and the country was thrown into a serious political quagmire. There was no president to attend to the affairs of the country and unfortunately, the president did not transmit power to the vice president, Goodluck Jonathan, to pilot the affairs of the country as acting president as was required by the constitution of Nigeria. So, Goodluck Jonathan could not legally function as acting president of Nigeria for several days, rolling into weeks and rolling into months. Issues of governance in the country took a nosedive. For reasons that were never explained, Goodluck Jonathan could not even speak with his boss on phone. He is reported to have said that whenever he called to speak with the president, the phone will either be picked by the ADC or CSO to the president. 
Jonathan was not also allowed to pay him a visit. His boss was literally kept away from him and he had no idea of what exactly was going on. The Senate President David Mark and the Speaker of the House of Representatives Dimeji Bankole were also not briefed on what exactly was going on with the President's health. Additionally, no letter was sent to them transmitting power to the Vice President. It thus became difficult for the Senate President and the Speaker to give satisfactory answers to queries from their colleagues on the floor of their respective chambers whenever issues surrounding the President's long absence were raised. Many weeks passed by and the President did not return. There was no press release from his handlers about the progress of his health and when he would return. There was fear and anxiety in the country. In fact, there was no leader for the country in the true sense of it. Something just needed to be done. The newsletter made the rounds that Yaradwa had passed on in Saudi Arabia and that his body was hidden away by the cabal. This news was not true. Perhaps to let the world know that Yaradwa was still alive, the handlers of the president decided to invite the Hausa correspondent of the BBC to come to the hospital in Saudi Arabia and interview the president. The then Hausa service editor of the BBC, Jamila Tanaza, traveled to the president's sick bed and had an interview with him. In the said interview, the president assured Nigerians that he will return to the country as soon as he is discharged from the hospital. The president's voice was aired globally. The voice of the president rather revealed that the president was in a very bad state. The interview was for barely 90 seconds and from his voice it was clear that the president's sickness was serious. He could barely speak. This then foiled another round of anxiety in the country. The outcry for Jonathan to take over as acting president became louder. Yet, the transition of power did not come from Saudi Arabia and in the eyes of the law, there was no president or acting president in the country. Several top shots in the country started calling for urgent action to be taken to save the country from anarchy, but there was a problem. President Yaradwa did not transmit power to Goodluck Jonathan and there was nothing in the constitution which authorized Jonathan to assume power without such power being officially transmitted to him. The highly anticipated transmission was not forthcoming from Saudi Arabia and the president's people were accused of blocking the transmission. What was described as the cabal was also accused of blocking the transmission. These allegations could not however be proved but the fact remained that power was not transmitted to Jonathan and so there was neither a president in the country nor acting president. It was a real dilemma for Nigeria. He took the intervention of the then Senate led by Senator David Mark to apply the doctrine of necessity to transmit power to Goodluck Jonathan and authorize him to function as acting president of the country, quote, pending the return of the president. Here is a text of David Mark's speech on the said day, quote, From the ordinary reading of section 145 of the constitution, the Senate has come to the conclusion that the president, through his declaration, transmitted worldwide on the British Broadcasting Corporation BBC, has furnished this parliament with irrefutable proof that he is on medical vacation in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and has therefore complied with the provisions of section 145 of the 1999 constitution." End of quote. By this pronouncement, the Senate conferred legal authority on Goodluck Jonathan to function as acting president of the country. The Senate President, however, added as follows in the resolution, quote, For the avoidance of doubt, let me emphasize that the President will automatically resume office as the President and Commander-in-Chief once he is well enough and returns to the country and informs us accordingly. End of quote. Taking a cue from the Senate, the House of Representatives passed a similar motion 
and conferred on Jonathan the legal authority to function as acting president pending the return of President Yaradwa. At this time, Yaradwa was already out of the country for an unbroken period of 78 days. From this moment on, Jonathan then stepped into the office of president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Nigeria. This is how good luck Jonathan became the number one citizen of Nigeria. Many thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel or follow the page for regular notification. I remain your friend and host Kemi Udim wishing you the best of time as you continue to journey with me on our mission to discover and document the history of Africa.